Hi everyone, uh, I'm Thomas Russell from uh, polyskill.com and today I will introduce a new pen from Wacom, the ProPen 3D. Uh, this new pen is designed to work with all the, the, the new uh, models of pen tablet from Wacom. Right now I have my Mobile Studio Pro 16, uh, which is uh, of course, uh, which supports this new pen. And since I'm a 3D artist, I'm working with ZBrush most of the time, well, it was a great opportunity to test this new this new pen. And this is um, this uh, then this new pen. Uh, let's do some unboxing. It will be very quick because I prefer focusing on what is inside and not really the box by itself. Then you have the uh, usual. If you already know this new pens from Wacom, I mean, if you already have a, a, a new model, this new pen holder um, with the pen inside. As usual, you have on top all your nibs, which is very important to replace the default one, the plastic one, by this gray one, which are way better, have a better feeling. And uh, just below you have here, the, uh, I don't know, to, this, this tool, I don't know if there is a name or not, just to remove the nib of your pen. Then the pen by itself, let me just open that completely. This is this new uh, Pro Pen 3D. Then, let me just do some basic comparison between the uh, pen 3D and the pro pen by itself. Okay. Uh, at the first look, what you will see is three buttons, which makes a huge difference between uh, uh, the uh, usual pen and this one. You will see that three buttons can change a lot of things for you. And except that, on the other side, you don't have any more the eraser. Um, for me, it's not a big deal because I'm not using this eraser. It's been, I don't know how many years, it's been, uh, I don't know, 15 years at least that I'm using Wacom product. I never use this eraser. Then for me, it's not, I'm not losing something by not having this eraser. Of course, it's up to you. Um, then this is the main, the two main differences between both pens. Um, except that, the, I don't know how to say that or to express this thing, but uh, the feeling is different. It's not the same plastic. The grip is slightly different as well. The white is not exactly the same, and the pen, the body of the pen by itself is slightly thinner, making that when you're just holding the pen like that, it feels even more natural, natural that, than it was before. Of course, I didn't replace the nibs yet, while in this one, of course, I have the gray ones. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just minor improvement, but interesting improvement. But if you compare to the uh, old pen that most of you perhaps know, this, this one is from my uh, Cintiq 22. Um, well, uh, between both pens, of course, the design seems to be very close. The buttons are the same location. It's This one is a bit thicker than this one, which is more thinner. Uh, but if you compare to both of them, you start to feel the difference and see the difference. Of course, you have the um, the metallic style uh, outline, which is more the design, but when you are used to that, it's this one feels way more plastic than it was uh, uh, before trying this new Pro Pen 3D. Then I will mainly talk about this pen with the brush, which is my uh, uh, software of choice for multiple reasons. Um, pen. Let me switch back to the driver. As you can see, you have two pens, which are my two pens for this tablet, this Pro Pen 2 and the Pro Pen 3D. Uh, as usual, you can add, if you want, an application for your pen to define which hotkeys you want to assign, how you want to use the express keys, uh, everything. You see, you have the function, sorry, my driver is in French, uh, but you can define for everything what you want to do globally or again, per application, uh, defined by default by the driver or not the touch ring, if you want to have multiple actions, it's really up to you. Okay, and about the ProPen 3, like I said, you have three buttons. And this is the setup I did for now, which is just an example. Um, I defined the right click on top, because before and for my main pen on my uh, Cintiq 22, this is uh, um, not the right click, the right click is this button, but I'm, I may flip on this one, but this one is a larger one. And for this one, you see, I define the right click because the right click can be useful for a lot of things inside of ZBrush. But 
it's maybe not the button I will use the most. Okay, the button in the middle will be the right click and control key, the modifier control key. And for this one, this is the alt click and uh, the alt, sorry, the alt key and the right click. And all the three buttons are assigned to the right click, but with or without a modifier control and alt, meaning that this button will allow me to do the 3D navigation inside of the brush. In the brush, if I'm using just the, uh, my keyboard, which is just on the side, if I'm doing Alt and doing just a single click like that, I'm doing a pan or a right click, this is the same. If I'm using the control key and a right click, I'm able to zoom in and out. And uh, if I'm using uh, just the right click by itself, this is the rotation. I'm using the keyboard. Then the keyboard meaning that I need to have a keyboard, I need to be uh, able to have the room for that. And just as, as, as an example, sorry, when you are traveling in the train, in the plane, or in my sofa, it's not very convenient to have a keyboard. While you can assign multiple hold keys, you can have the radial menu, a lot of things. Then having the ability to do the navigation directly through the pen will avoid you using extra keys for nothing. Or just losing your focus because you need to press some button while you have everything under just one finger and not two hands. Then this is one possibility, 3D navigation with your pen. Another one is, you see my UI is slightly customized and I have two menus, this Z plugin and this Z topo. This Z topo is the main functions, tools I'm using with the brush. Then another alternative is, you see I assign this menu to one key on my keyboard. Again, I need to look at my keyboard and because all the main keys are used by default by the brush, you don't have a lot of extra spare keys to use for your hot keys. And this one on my keyboard, let me show you my keyboard. This is this one, not the nine, the, 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 the letter which is just below. And when you are, even if you have your, your hand like that, it's not very easy. Then I need to look at my keyboard to find this, this key, which is problematic. And of course, you can assign that to one of your express key, which was what I was doing before. But now I can say, oh, perhaps I want to have for this key, this one, having this menu and the button in the middle. You see, I have two custom menus having an extra menu. Then you are able to customize like that. If I'm going back to the driver, then I don't want to use this alt and, uh, alt and right click uh, function, but I want to go to my keyboard, a touch, and you see a touch, sorry, a key, sorry, and define this key, okay? And now, if I'm pressing this button, you see, like that, I'm not doing the 3D navigation anymore, but I'm able to call this menu. And because this menu will appear directly below, the, I mean, just under the tip of my pen, it's very quick and fast to work like that. And it increases my productivity. Then I'm able to mix why not the 3D navigation because I know I'm doing a lot of pan or a lot of zoom, but not really, let's say, rotation. It's really up to you. But having this extra button gives you more control. And to be honest, for me, the, the main downside of the, 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 the Mobile Studio Pro or the Cintiq is the lack of extra buttons. Then now you see on the Mobile Studio Pro 16, you have four buttons, express keys, and now it's way better than before. But for me, if I, I'm, I have my hands here, I need to go, on, to go on top, I need to look. Then for some actions, which I'm not doing on a very regular basis, this is perfect. But action that, okay, I want to do a zero measure, I want to delete something, I want to do a mirror and world or whatever, this type of functionality, for me, it's way better to have that just under my button. And because now I have three buttons and not anymore two buttons, for sure I will build an extra menu with my brushes or, or, or something like that just to be able to call these menus with my tablet. And of course, I'm speaking of ZBrush, but for almost all the software you can customize and through the software or through the driver, you are able to do your own menus, your own, I don't know, calling some macros or, or, or using functions, stuff like that. Then just one button for me changed a lot of things. Of course, you can have four buttons or five because it would be very tricky after to work on that. But you see, I have everything under my thumb like that. All my buttons, I can rotate slightly because one, in fact, it's up to you also to see the way you are uh, just holding your pen. 
um, I'm really holding my pen like that, in fact. I have my thumb on top of the button. Then I can just move slightly on, just moving forward or backward, pressing with the tip or more the back of my uh, my finger. This, uh, sorry, I don't know, I forgot the name in English. Um, and this is very quick and easy. And because the shape of the button are totally different, it's very easy to feel the buttons. This is something I really enjoy. And now just to conclude about this um, this pen, of course, it's up to you to see if you need to upgrade to this pen or not. Of course, need, you need to check if your pen tablet is supporting this new pen. But I don't see myself using any more my Pro Pen 2 from this one, at least for 3D stuff. I will customize for sure. Then for me, now it's more a spare uh, pen for this one. I use this one by default. And even if I'm doing some Photoshop and things like that, I will use it. And now my concern, which is very personal, like I said, my pen tablet, my main pen tablet is the Cintiq 22. And first of all, I'm, it's very difficult now to work with it because I really prefer the, uh, the feeling of the Mobile Studio Pro, the screen, the resolution, and really the feeling of the pen. What lacks me for now is the space. Even if this is a 4K resolution, to be honest, I really enjoy this hardware. But for production, I prefer my own computer, which is way more powerful with more RAM, etc. But uh, now it's difficult to work without this pen on the other uh, uh, Cintiq. Then that, that's a problem. I will need to upgrade to, to a, new, a new model of Cintiq in the future, unfortunately. Anyway, for me, yes, that's a good pen. If you are looking for productivity, you, you really need to have your own menus, custom stuff like that. I think you need to consider this upgrade. This is, of course, up to you. Um, I don't have any kind of negative things to say. The, for me, the only negative point is I still don't understand why Wacom is still providing these plastic nibs, which gives a bad feeling while these, um, these felt nibs like that, of course, they don't, the, the lifespan is very short compared to this plastic, but the feeling is way different. Then, if you are buying, I mean, if, if you're spending your time on the tablet, it's worth spending five or, or, or seven dollars euros to buy extra nibs and not using the plastic one, but this soft one. You will feel something totally different. Then, this is just my advice. This is the only negative point uh, about this uh, this pen. Anyway, I hope you will uh, you 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 enjoyed this presentation. I hope you. You spend more time with your tablet because whatever, uh, whoever you are, I mean, uh, a 3D artist, a 2D artist, I mean, it's interesting. You can use that, of course, with all the usage, uh, especially if you enjoy customization. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this, uh, this uh, presentation of this new Wacom Pro Pen 3D. And uh, see you soon for more videos in English and articles in English at polyskill.com. Thank you. Bye bye.